Today's active self-protection video comes to us out of Fort Myers, Florida, and I'm going to tell you, this one breaks the mold a little bit of what the media wants to tell you about how defensive encounters go down, but it shows us some important lessons that we've got to keep in mind. Number one, it's going to show us the importance of doing the best you can to de-escalate conflicts to get yourself out of them if you possibly can. Number two, it does show us that racial violence is a reality in our world. Number three, it shows us that sometimes, you know, when you shoot somebody, when you gotta draw your force multiplier and use it, it happens so fast that you don't generally have time to think. We see that psychological stops actually can happen, and we do see some good tips on how to follow up on the defensive shooting when you have to contact the police. This video begins with the people that are coming in right now who are going to be all of the problems. The guy without his shirt on there is the one who's going to really be the problems. And I'm going to speed things up. I'm trying to compress about a 15 minute video down here for you so that uh, it's not too cumbersome. And here is going to be our defender here. This young man comes in here and he is armed with a 40 caliber Smith & Wesson according to the news link. You can go and read all about it. And these guys are just going and doing their thing and now these white guys come up and start hurling some racial epithets at these guys and calling him some nasty names, and now this guy in white, he's, he's offering to apologize, and the guy says, no, I don't want your apologies, and when he does, the guy punches him in the face. So now this, this gentleman in the white shirt here, he, he goes ahead and backs up and draws his firearm, and he's just going to back off from these guys because he doesn't want to have any more problems. And boy, I got to tell you, that's, that's pretty admirable against that big group, but now the little guy decides he's going to come in, and uh, the defender there put three shots in him, one, two, three, and you see how that happens, how fast he had to back up, put three shots, the guy decided to do something else, and they run off. If you read the news story, they drove off, and that guy ended up dying of his injuries and here now what we see is we see our defender get on the phone with 911 he calls the 911 operator tells him what's going on and says that he's going to put his gun down on the counter you can see it there on the counter and that they'll find him you know on the ground when the police officers get there and that's exactly what's going to happen he goes ahead and gets on the ground and because he's been on the phone with 911, because they know who he is, what he looks like and all that, the police officers come in cool and collected and everybody's okay. And this guy, they're going to take him into custody briefly. And of course, he's not charged because this was a defensive shooting. Boy, there was an awful lot that went down in that fight. A whole lot of pre-fight indicators and cues that came up that said, holy cow, something bad is coming. Number two, great thing that our defender had his defensive firearm on him and he used it effectively. This was a psychological stop when he shot the guy, the guy ran off and that's okay. It was a very effective stop. And number three, he got on the phone with the police and I think that's an important principle because usually from a legal perspective, they tend to side with the person who calls the police first are generally seen as the one who is the good guy. In this case, the good guy came out on top, and that is why he covered his ass.